So uh, if you wouldn't mind going around, we could start with Enish and then move along. That'd be great. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Inish Aniceto. Uh, I'm originally from Portugal, but uh, uh, based in University of Southampton at the moment, the math, uh, mathematical sciences department. Um, and yes, and uh, one of the organizers, obviously, <laughs> and working on on ma more uh, aspects of mathematical physics. Um, and Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Howes. I'm a professor at the University of Southampton in the same department as Inesh. Um, my background is asymptotic analysis, but with I, mean, I was originally a maths physicist, but moved more into the applied maths area. And finally, Adri. So I'm Adri Gallas. I'm from uh, the University of Edinburgh, and uh, I'm also working in, in asymptotics, and I'm also working in special functions. Fantastic. Okay, so if we move on to that first question, which is very straightforward, um, and as I say, you can either take it in turns to, to answer and add things, or you can pick someone who'd like to lead on each one. But the question is simply giving a brief overview of the programme's theme and subject. Well, so the the, the, the programme's theme is, is, is um, asymptotic analysis and how to use it or how to apply it in a very, in, in, I would say, uh, many varied fields uh, of, of mathematics. Um, meaning asymptotic analysis is a, um, is a tool that allows us to go from uh, um, perturbation theory into understanding the analytic properties of something, like from the physics point of view, something that we can observe. And it complements from the from my point of view, like uh, um, numerical calculations that are quite uh, now quite uh, common, but the, quite often don't provide as much information unless we already know um, more about the subject. It, it they might. It sometimes it's difficult to pinpoint the, the the properties that we want to study directly. So you have to do numerical analysis. Uh, uh, in a more broader term, and this is uh, very much a complement of, of that area. Sorry, <laughs> maybe you can also guys say something else as well. All right, let me let me say something then. Okay, so um, asymptotic analysis underpins many fields in mathematics and physics, and what we're trying to do here is to bring together um, both fields in, in in applied mathematics and more also in theoretical physics. And the reason that we're doing this is because uh, about 25 years ago, there was an original program where Adri and I, in fact, actually more or less met there, um, where we were working on exponential asymptotics. And exponential asymptotics is about including exponentially small terms in asymptotic expansions, uh, which are approximations to reality. Now, normally you throw away exponentially small terms, but actually what's been shown extensively is that by including these exponentially small terms, even though they're numerically irrelevant, they can actually uh, nevertheless give you much more information about the system, extend the range of validity of your expansions and allow you to get better numerical accuracy overall. And so um, 25 years ago, there was a lot of work being done on just exploring it, what, what you could do with exponential asymptotics. Um, and this came about from the work of, say, Dingle and people like this, and, and physicists. Um, and then there was also a very um, elegant theory uh, by Eccal called resurgence theory, which dealt with this in a much more mathematical and, uh, uh, and super rigorous way. Um, and the problem was that uh, um, it was quite a difficult theory to get into. Um, and then what happened was about six or seven years ago, um, uh, I was invited to a meeting at CERN where I met Inesh, um, and she pulled me up short in one of my uh, lectures and said, why aren't you doing it this way? And I suddenly thought, oh, and it became very clear that there's a lot of work now gone on in theoretical physics, which has actually um, understood Eccal's theory and has actually turned it into something that is very much more um, applicable. So what we're doing with this uh, um, program is we're putting the two together. We're taking all the knowledge that's built up over the past 25 years in, in sort of the applied maths and analysis circles 
and actually now putting it together with what the, the theoretical physicists, the string theorists have been doing um, in using uh, resurgence theory um, in order to actually uh, advance both areas together. So. Wonderful. And Adri, I don't know if there was anything you wanted to add beyond these comprehensive answers from Inesh and Chris. No, not at the moment. No, I think there may be one of your other questions we can go deeper into. Super. Um, so the, the next question, I think that Chris, you, you went into quite a lot of detail along these lines, but is, is there anything more to add about why this is a particularly exciting or timely topic? Well, sorry, I mean, it, it's sorry, it's so it's a particularly um, exciting and timely approach because um, there is currently a lot of effort going on in, in, in string theory on, on the physics side to advance the subject in, in many more interesting and complicated problems than perhaps have been looked at um, uh, before on the applied math side. And the advances made in that area actually allow sort of technology transfer between the two. So, you know, from the applied math point of view, we're hoping to learn a lot of the more uh, sort of the more intricate details and powerful techniques of, of, of in, in resurgence theory. Um, but we in, on the applied side have the uh, a sort of a, a different set of applications uh, that, that might be of interest uh, to, to apply some of the theoretical physics techniques to. Um, so that's, uh, it's really about crossover between the, the technology transfer between the two subjects. And we want to try and put the two communities together through this uh, result to be able to do that. Um, and yes, so it, it, it's timely and, and it's actually quite exciting. Um, you know, my, my knowledge of the field has, has, has dramatically increased through having worked with Inesh and, and, and her co-workers. And um, we're actually, even today, the three of us are discussing a problem that, that actually we hope will make a, a bit of a breakthrough on combining the techniques, so. Can I add something? So this, this is, you've mentioned more of like the technology transfer from all the, the theoretical physicists into a lot of the, the, the applied maths community, but uh, there's, there's a, a, an immense world of, of phenomena that has been studied in more classical, uh, meaning applied maths community and with asymptotic methods, and, and, and in, including, I mean, what for me, it would be uh, phase space, so parameter space uh, problems, which, is something that is still lacking a fair amount from the point of view of the of the physics community, and meaning it, it's needed. It's desperately needed, and uh, and I think the tra technology transfer also goes this way. That that all this knowledge that is there and and, and has been there for many years, but still developed, of course, uh, uh, meaning it, it's meaning it will make major breakthroughs in a lot of different. Um, problems in, in theoretical physics as well. So maybe it's also good to add actually that uh, although we, you, you're speaking so far with two communities, but actually there are three because even in applied mathematics, there are two completely different communities. There's one group who works on proper applied mathematics, uh, fluids and so on. And there's a, another group who works more in pure asymptotics and special functions. And Chris and I belong more to that group. And, and, and again, also it's good that those two groups start, and all, all three groups start talking to each other. And one thing that we discovered actually by bringing all three groups together, together is that the, 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 the very applied mathematicians are actually also now for the first time starting talking to the physicists. They were talking to us already, but uh, the ones in the middle, but um, not to the physicists. Excellent, thank you. Um... What do you think are the main challenges which are likely to arise during this program? Now, when I saw this question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apart from the obvious one, which is the, 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 the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, COVID aside. Yeah, that's a great answer though, thank you. <laughs> but it does have a major impact actually in the progress in the, during this um, whole meeting. It's, it, yes, it's so we, I mean, to, to, to be enthusiastic when you're here and you, you can knock on each other's door and you can overhear people talking to each other. I mean, that doesn't happen, unfortunately, at the moment. Not just that, meaning it's, it's, it, people are home and, and, but they still have all the, their, their, their usual uh, load of work. So it's, this is extra at the moment. It's not the same as 
this is the main event happening during that week for their lives. No, it's just this extra thing. So keeping keeping this engagement, especially with when you are trying to bring different communities together, is um, is, is 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 a serious challenge actually. And maybe it's actually useful to mention it, even though I know that's not the answer you were looking for. But uh, it's because it might be here for a while. We might still not be completely normal for a while. So it, it, it might be useful for other uh, programs to know, to realize this as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, normally attendance at an INI program or workshop is an escape, you know, to put it one way from your obligations elsewhere. Um, and it's a shame that can't be enforced even if people are at home, but attending uh, a workshop here. So yeah, I, I completely understand why you would say that. Absolutely. Um, were there any things you wanted to add about the scientific side, about the, the, the main challenges of pushing ahead in this field? I'd like to just mention one thing, that actually the main challenges are exactly the main objectives of the, the for me at least, they're made the main objectives of the program, which is to bring these communities together. It's to make sure that you give ample opportunity uh, for, for language, the, meaning the, the, the language, to surpass the language barrier between the, the communities, uh, to have discussions that are you know, easy enough for different communities to actually feel that they can learn from the other ones. And sometimes it's, it's again, it's just about not understanding what, what the different people are, are, are actually talking about. And, 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 this, and I think giving ample opportunities for this, for the technology transferred, for uh, providing interesting examples that you think that actually have overlapped between communities so that they can see, oh, right, that actually appears in that problem in a very different area. Um, and, and well, part of that plus being online, of course, but uh, I would say that for me, that's, that's one of the, the main challenges, I think, of the problem, of the program. Yeah, I think I, I agree with Inesh. I think the, the biggest problem initially is, is, is the language barrier. We all have our own way of describing the same phenomena or, or slightly related phenomena, and, and we're exploring, well, is that the same phenomena or is it something slightly different? And so, I mean, you know, moving on to sort of the, the, the technological things, I mean, um, for me, uh, you know, there, there's different aspects we can address here. I mean, you know, um, numerical aspects is one thing, you know, um, is it possible to use some of the more resurgent uh, methods um, with Borel Pardé and things like this in order to improve the numerical accuracy you can get in applied mathematical problems using um, slightly more sophisticated techniques from that way. Likewise, um, you know, from, from going the other way, I think, you know, there, there, there are many interesting problems to do with matrix models, um, quantum field theory, these things, um, where, you know, there, there's work that, that exists in sort of scalar type problems um, that, that, that are well known, but um, it's not clear how that the work in the applied mass community would generalize over to that to that area there. So, I mean, but that can go to the very fundamental things as to how do you even define a path integral and things like this. So, you know, those, those are things that are, are relevant. I think one thing that I would love to get out of this is um, um, there's been, you know, one dimensional uh, problems, both linear and nonlinear have been done quite a lot. Um, moving to, I know, some of our other organizers, uh, Phil Trin and people like that, John, Chat um, John Chapman is his co-worker, um, they want to actually, you know, we want to sort of look and see what about PDE problems. So um, another of our co-workers, John King, is currently working on uh, PDE problems and, and how they actually do relate to path integrals. So, I mean, there are there, there, there's things that we can look at there. So. Um, those are some of the things that, that, that I would like to get out of it um, and, and, and see what happens. Super. And um, can you tell me a little bit more about the applications or potential future applications uh, of the field? Well, what some of my more recent work um, involving exponential asymptotics was to do with air acoustic jet noise. So this was one of these sort of fortuitous events where you think, well, it's got nothing to do with it, but you're asked to help out co-supervise a project. And, uh, and then it turns out that, that you discover a whole new um, beaming of, of, of air acoustic noise that no one had spotted before. And so that turned out to be these very exponentially small terms, which are dropping onto different reamer sheets, coming back in, in, in other parts of the domain. 
and, and generating the sound that then grows to become very large. So, you know, that that was one recent sort of real world application to, to what we were doing. But I mean, in, in terms of physics, uh, Inesh probably knows a little more. Well, like Millie, of course, Millie, there's there's been lots of different uh, uh, applications that have been analyzed and we've had actually already a few seminars trying to probe some of these uh, these ideas, but uh, you can have applications from black holes to um, uh, to fluid dynamics, maybe with a lot of symmetries, that's what you'd say. It's not the fluid dynamics of the <laughs> of the, uh, the typical applied maths community, but uh, um, yeah, but even if we start going at bifurcations and pattern formation and, and all these things, actually, these happen in physics. And it's one of my hopes is actually you can take all the all the, the, the structure that has been learned by this by the, the, this other community that I didn't know before uh, from a while ago uh, and, and actually learn a lot about a lot of problems that show up in uh, in recent um, in recent uh, problems in, in, in theoretical physics. I mean, there's, there's plenty of other ones, of course, matrix models, uh, field theories, uh, how to actually properly define, go from multiple integrals into infinite integrals, <laughs> um, infinite dimensional integrals, which is not, it, it's, it's a highly non-trivial step, but there's plenty of work that, that has been developed and through discussions, I think that uh, a lot could actually be advanced. It may be not the final answer, naturally, but uh, um, yeah, but I mean, gauge theories, of, there's, there's plenty yeah, to, to still analyze. And I think that, yeah, indeed, I think that for, for me, I've gone a bit the other way, which is I've gone from uh, having all these problems in physics and wanting to understand them and knowing that these, there's, there's this huge community that knows a lot more about some of these features than I do. Um, and and actually starting to learn that actually you know I have these these methods that I that maybe I can learn more about their problems and also contribute. So it goes both ways. And also, you may also in mathematics we have lots of uh, interesting results now, and they are mainly byproducts because we build up a much more powerful uh, machinery to, to do asymptotics. And certainly, for example, for the, the famous uh, Stirling approximation for the factorial, you know, that, for, that formula, that approximation really exists for hundreds of years, but there were no sharp error bounds. And certainly, by using new machinery, we have sharp error bounds. And, and that applies to many special functions that are very well known. The asymptotics experiences were, were known, people were using them already for hundreds of years, but how good they were, no, nobody knew. And now certainly we produce um, and sharp error bounds showing exactly how uh, good they are. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was a really fascinating answer from all three. Um, the final question I was going to ask is, is much more of a, a vague one, which was, uh, could there be any other impacts from your program? You've already mentioned marrying together disparate communities, but could you imagine any other impacts from your program that, that might, we might see? In your question, it says novel collaborations. Well, I, I do think so. I think that people, even, even through strange online uh, discussions, though, bringing people that didn't know each other and now they're talking about, you know, listening to John King talk about uh, path integrals with uh, <laughs> in, in our discussions, it's, it's quite fun. Um, and not just so I think that that there's a huge potential for for actually new collaborations and 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 uh, new paths of 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 of, of research. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we realized that when we put the proposal into company was actually there was we we'd kind of all grown up now and, and we were the adults and there were lots of new people in the field, our own students working together. Uh, working and so we wanted to sort of bring that new generation together um, perhaps at the Newton Institute and, and again make those as I say 25 years ago um, 
you know, I was partly a physicist then and Andrew was definitely a mathematician. We sort of got together and have, have developed a, a, a network of people that we've been working with ever since. And, it, and we felt that it was time to have a, a new network or, or to get the next generation going and, and getting their networks established. So, you know, we ran a, a summer school to start off with or a winter school to start off with and uh, had, um, I can't remember the number, but it was, it was, it was 50 or 60 people there, I think. And, uh, um, and, and the, you know, and seeing them all working together and beginning to make those links, that was a really the long-term point of coming to the Newton Institute is, is getting those links and, and setting up people with networks for the rest of their academic careers, hopefully. Fabulous. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed uh, listening to those answers very much. So, um, Inesh, Chris and Andrew, uh, thanks again. And I hope you have a nice time in the building, um, you, you lucky three. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing you in person uh, as soon as I'm next there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll stop the recording now, but that was really great. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and as I mentioned in the email to you, Anish, um, Plus Magazine, who we're working with at the moment, will we'll really enjoy listening to these answers because they're putting together lots of content based on your subject matter. So, um, And it'll, I'll put it on the website as well, so uh, the rest of the world will be able to see it. So thanks again. Uh, enjoy getting back to work. And uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier in the talk how you were talking about a certain aspect of your research this afternoon. So yeah, get back to it. Enjoy. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.